and God says, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Let's be still for a few moments and just worship His holiness. Let's bathe in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We walk in your Lord. We walk in your Lord. We walk in your Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He's a God who, strength, who strengthens those that are weak, comforts those that are broken hearted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Give salvation to those that simply do not deserve it. Hallelujah. He's a God that loves. Hallelujah. And we're going to honor him and praise him today. Hallelujah. Pray with me, Brick Church. Our Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to your presence. This holy day, hallelujah, we exalt you because there is none like you, hallelujah. We exalt you, hallelujah, because no one else loves us the way that you do, Lord God. Hallelujah, we thank you because you are in this place. We thank you because you understand everything that we go through, hallelujah. Every emotion that we experience, that we're experiencing today, Lord God, you understand it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Hallelujah. Lord, your love, hallelujah, reaches to the heavens. Lord, and we give you glory today for who you are, for your love, Lord Jesus. Lord, because even though we are unworthy, even though we are undeserving, hallelujah, you love us anyway. Lord, and we praise you. We give you glory today, Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would hug those that need comfort. Hallelujah. Lord, that you would comfort the brokenhearted, that you would give strength to the weak, that you would give healing. Hallelujah. To the sick. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, whatever we may come with today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, you know what we need even more than we ourselves, Lord Jesus. And we lay it all down before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us to honor you. Help us to worship you today. Help us to praise you today. Oh, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, be glorified, hallelujah. As the angels worship you, as they cover their eyes, as they cover their feet, as they cover their hands, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you in the same way, with all that we have, with all that is in us, because there is none that is worthy, none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you and honor you today, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Can we give God some glory today? Hallelujah. Praise you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to get started with worship. If you're here for the first time, we welcome and we're glad you're here. My name is Austin. It's the only job in the top of it. I'm sure you just be in the surf.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah,
Hallelujah.
course, this Friday we have our weekly Friday night prayer at Pastor Jacob's house at 7 p.m. This is the time for us as a church family to get together and intercede for the needs of our church family and for our community. And we have an awesome time in fellowship, so we'd love for you to join us on Friday at 7 p.m. at Pastor Jacob's house. And of course, we'll see you right back here on Sunday for our Sunday service at 11 a.m. Um, we're so excited that you're joining us this morning, um, and we hope to see you there. So be sure to follow us on our social media, uh, the bridge, at The Bridge PA on Instagram, and The Bridge by Salem on Facebook, um, and our website is thebridgepa.com for, for more information and updates on things to come. I know, I know you're unable to kind of see um, the links, but there you go. So connect groups this week. We have growth track every other Thursday. And on Friday, we have our Friday night prayer. And then keep it on to our social slides, so. Um, and I'm going to take a, I'm going to let Emily come up here for a second. I know you may have seen her on our worship team. And she's going to tell you a little bit about um, an event that she has coming up this week. Thank you. As, in, um, as she said, my name is Emily. Um, and so this summer, I'm going to be spending a month in Ghana. Um, and so I'm on my last leg of fundraising. And so this coming Saturday um, at 7 p.m. at Wissahickon Church, we're going to be putting on kind of like a mini coffee house. Um, so there's going to be some amazing Christian artists that come and um, just lead us in worship or in songs that they've written. Um, and we'll have like a little child care area where kids can um, dance and listen to music and color and that kind of stuff. Um, and some really good snacks. So I would love if you guys could make it out to that. Um, yeah. Thanks, Emily. Um, why don't you all just join me in saying a word of prayer for Pastor Jacob as he brings the word. Dear God, we thank you for uh, this time that we can gather together in your presence. And we thank you for allowing us to come and we pray for those who are unable to make it. And we ask them that you meet them where they are, God. We thank you for the word that you've given to Pastor Jacob. And we ask that you speak through him to us, God. Um, and don't let us leave the same way that we came. We love you, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Sorry about the mishap. I'm trying to plug my charger in there. And, uh, that's when you guys probably lost uh, visibility to the display screen, uh, to the TV screen. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming this morning and joining us in worship. Uh, we are a new church plant here in Ben Salem with the vision of saturating this city with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with everything Amen. we do, everything we say. Um, <clears throat> Uh, if you are here for the first time, uh, once again, warm welcome. Uh, make sure you get your gift and fill your connection card. We would like to connect with you and pray for you and do life together. Um, <clears throat> this weekend, uh, you know, was a weekend where we celebrated Joel's life and Joel's family is here, the Perilla family. I have to tell you, from yesterday, I've been getting... Uh, we have been getting, even as a church, uh, a lot of messages of how the two days have impacted many lives. Many people are going back home and saying, you know what? If Joel can do it, I can do it too. Amen. 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 Many folks, um, as we all know, we, are, we have been encouraged by the two days and uh, people have been messaging us and um, it's just incredible to see how Joel is still speaking to the lives of many. Um, and I thank God for his life and thank God for, um, you know, um, the stories and the jokes and the pranks and uh, everything. It's just uh, such an amazing guy and I thank God for that. Another example that I have to, I have to mention is the strength of the family. Uh, I was there in the hospital room. Um, and I have to say, it was a, it was like a prayer slash worship slash prayer. Everybody was just in, you know, God's presence as you know the line went flat and the number went zero. And the family was so strong. And even the last few days, their strength has been a reflection of God's strength. That God is with us. Even when we are weak, God's strength Amen. makes us strong. Amen. Amen. And we were able to see that. I have to say it to the Kuro family. You guys have been truly an example of that God's strength. And 
we as a church and many others are encouraged by that. So um, thank you once again. Um, at the same time, we as a church promise that we would uh, uh, pray for you and be with you in this journey. Um, it's going to be tough. I still miss my dad. It's been seven years, and and I can only ima I cannot imagine how much uh, uh, support, prayer, and strength you need. So we are uh, with you, and we're going to pray with you, and Amen. let's do this together. Amen. 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 that said, um, I'm going to um, get into today's um, message, which is God's vessel. Um, you're going to go to the, uh, the second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 21. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Hallelujah. God put this message in my heart through a vision, and I was wondering what more, what else can we learn about this? And I was just sitting in God's presence, just meditating on His word, and just, just sitting and saying, God, just speak to us and speak to me. And um, this word is very practical, and it comes strong at times. So just a heads up, uh, but this is God's word, and let's just dive into His word that will strengthen us, that will transform us, and bring us closer to him. Amen? Amen. When we hear about this word called vessel, what's the question that comes into our minds? I believe, the, sorry? Okay. Uh, one of the common things, that's right, one of the common things that comes into our minds is God, use me, right? Use me as a vessel. Use me the way you want to use me. Use me more than this. Or our imaginations just go crazy just because we pray that God needs to use us. And we pray that it would happen. And God, vessel. God, use me. Um, I want to talk to you about when you look at a uh, perfume bottle, all right, or, or a cologne bottle, you pay about, some of them are about $100, $150, they're very expensive ones. When you look at those bottles, you know, we are so careful with the bottle, we use it, we don't use it like crazy, right? I don't know, that's me, I'm sorry. I'm a little stingy when it comes to expensive stuff. Um, thank God I didn't use a $20 one. Um, for a while. I mean, it serves a purpose. <laughs> um, but those expensive perfume bottles that we have in our houses, we have a place for them, and what do you think, or where do you think the value lies? The value is not in the container, is it? No. The bottle itself is probably a dollar or two. If you go to the dollar store, you get all kinds of containers, right? So a container that is not really that expensive, but what's in it is what gives the value. Amen? Amen. So if you want to define a vessel. A vessel is just a container. Vessel is a container. Before we talk about God using us or anything, I want you to know that vessel means container. What contains or what is in it is what matters the most.
if what's in the vessel is not of value, then the vessel is not of value. What's in the vessel should be of value. With all that we enjoy in this earth, all the possessions and everything that we can possibly have, we bring it all together and we try to fill our lives with it. And what happens is everything, every entertainment that's out there, everything that the world can offer, we put it in ourselves and there's still vacuum. Because none of that <coughs> can actually fill us. We are designed to be filled with God. We are containers that carry God. So, so if we are not with God, then I don't know. Let's not see. See, we we jump into this thing like God used. Yes, God will use. But let's come back to the basics of who we are. What's in the container is important. Amen. Some illustrations. What is this? Soup. 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 You're correct. What is this? Pickles. 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 What's in the container defines who you are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. You didn't say this is a glass bottle filled with, you didn't say this is a can filled, no, you just define what's in the container. So it matters so much. There's a reason why God designed us. So that we are designed in such a way that oh, God can fill us and that, so that people can see God in us. We are made to be vessels for God. Amen. We need to come back to the purpose, to the purpose of our life. You know what's the purpose of our life? Before even we cry out, God, use me. The purpose is the fact that we need to be filled with God. That is the ultimate purpose. So before you try to do anything else, I want you to come back to God and say, God, just fill me up with you. So when the world looks at me, they see you. That's so important, people of God. Before we try to do anything in this world or anything, even with your, even in your Christian journey, this is the ultimate. Should be the ultimate focus of our hearts. <coughs> Romans nine thirty one says, and they can say, when God created man, He formed us like a vessel. Yeah. Vessels of clay. But he destined us for honor and glory. For God's glory. Yeah, we are vessels of mercy. God's mercy. But at the same time, he has destined us to be his containers. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that a privilege? Isn't that such a great thing to know that God has designed us and destined us so that we could be this vessel designed for, so he could reside in us and we are just full of it. Amen? Amen. <coughs> so, fill yourself with God. my message for you today. Fill yourself with God. How do you do that? 
for yourself with God's word. Read God's word. Memorize God's word. I mean, even in 2020, I have already said this like three, four times, right? Read God's word. Meditate on his word. You know what fills you here is what fills you here and then what comes out of here, right? So fill yourself with God's word. Godly thoughts is so important. Philippians 4, 8, you know this. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Let this words be your filter, man. Yeah. Nothing else need room in your thought process. And as your thought process becomes so full of God, your heart becomes so full of Amen. God, and then you become a vessel so full of God. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Before we try to do community outreach, before we try to help the orphans, before we try to feed the homeless, I, I wish we could come back to this basic of knowing that we are designed, destined to just be filled with God, and we would come back to God and say, God, I need you. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Amen. You know, sometimes we are filled with so many other things, so many other things. Um, if this is you, there is, sometimes we are filled with our achievements. Mm. What we have achieved in this earth. Mm. Maybe, hey, I was able to buy a house. I was able to earn a degree. Get a good job. All the achievements that we can put together. Amen. We sometimes fill with it. <coughs> and honestly, I see a crazy trend <coughs> in our country. Sorry, just trying to give mix up examples. Football, sports. Sometimes we are filled with sports, and the media does a great job just saturating our life with sports. It's entertainment; it helps us. I watch them, and please watch them. But what I'm saying is, it fills our lives in cars. This is an example: cars. We love cars. Go after the coolest, hottest car out there. And sometimes all we can think of. His food. <laughs> and some of us are actually Christians. And I'm just saying, if this is um, this is probably what the world sees, right? So I'm gonna say this is God. Right? This is God. And this is what the world sees. This is so much of us. And then there's God in there. Honestly, the world is confused. God. Yeah, she mentioned God. Yeah, he mentioned God. But then he's also, she's also worried about her, you know, her new house. Oh, and I'm not saying don't mention of don't buy it. I'm not saying that. Like we're just so consumed by all the things that the world has for us. And we and we get so caught up with it that anything that we miss or anything uh, you know, God forbid it happens or gets taken away, we are so um just we we, we go crazy, we just crash because uh, because that's what was filling our lives. Oh yeah, we go to church. You see it, God? We go to church, by the way. Easter, we go to church, some people. And sometimes, in our Christian faith, honestly, sometimes in our Christian faith, 
We say we have God and we know God. And sometimes when challenges come, when pressure comes, we get pressured. And we find out it was just a name. There's nothing in it. We just carry a name. We're Christians. God is good. We know we're supposed to spit it out. We know how to talk about God. Oh, we probably even know <laughs> about the gospel and we might share. But when, when pressure comes sometimes, it's empty. Jesus, help and can I be honest with you? The world is totally confused with Christians like us. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. What they need to see, honestly, what they need to see in you is nothing else. It's nothing else but completely filled with God. Completely filled with God. That's all they need to see. <coughs> Can I be honest with you? The world is not looking for uh, your degree. Sometimes we think we can get friends because of our achievements. Oh yeah, they can get it from anywhere. They see enough people around them who have made a lot of achievements. Maybe say, maybe if I have a nice house in this area, I can make all those nice friends or, or vice versa, whatever you want to say. But honestly, that's not what the world is looking for. A better educated person, that's not what the world is looking for. They have pe people know there's enough of them. And we are part of them, yes. Go for it, achieve things, people of God. Pray. You know, strive for things and, and do the best you can. And I pray that you all fly, you know, come out in flying colors and do the best you can. But let that not consume our lives. Amen. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And everything else should just follow us. Not that we follow them and make God like a, you know, like, like a part of our lives. But let God just, just be... All in all, let him be the supreme being. Let him be the foremost in everything in our lives. And that's what people want to see. That's what people are looking for. People are looking for God. People are searching for God. They're searching for peace. They're searching for joy. They're searching for love. And they can find it nowhere else but through you, Amen. if you become a vessel that carries God, yeah. that contains God, yeah. and if they can see that in you, Amen. Amen. that's what they need. Yes. Like I always say, you are the Jesus. Amen. The world can see today. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 All right, this is going to be a little hard, but let's, let's go to this. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. <coughs> just listen to me. I, I don't know if I have that up, but just listen to me. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 onwards. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, all right, just pay attention. If anyone comes to me and does not hate, it's a very strong word. Jesus is saying, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, <coughs> And mother, and wife. Let's see, just hang tight. <laughs> and children, and brothers, and sisters. Yes, and even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower and does not first sit down and count the cost? Whether he has enough to complete it, otherwise when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish all, who, who see it, who, all who see it begin to mock it. Say, so this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king goes out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and, and deliberate, deliberate. And deliberate whether he is able uh, with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a, a great way off, 
he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Amen. Amen. The same thing I'm trying to tell you today. Before you go to war, before you go community outreach, before you do anything in the community, God is saying, number one, renounce everything and fill yourself with God. This is what God is asking for, not with all the other stuff in it. God is saying, renounce everything. He's not saying that you need to hate your father or your mother or your sister or your brother or your wife or your children. That's not what Jesus, what Jesus is trying to say that he is the supreme. He should be the supreme being in your life. He is the only one that can satisfy you. He is the only one that can give you joy. And that he's the only one that you long for more than anything else in this world. That is. Amen. Hallelujah. And to be honest with you, when your relationship with God, when you make him number one in your life, and you make him the supreme most being, priority, your all in all, your ultimate satisfaction, when that becomes Jesus, your relationship with other people will automatically be in sync. Amen. Will automatically fall in place. People will see the love of God just flowing through you to their lives. I cannot, in other words, I cannot be a good husband if I cannot fall in love with Jesus first. Amen. You know, one preacher once said like this, and I, it really hit me hard. Your relationship with your spouse shows your relationship with Jesus. Right? That, that's what Paul also says. Just like you, you know, just like how what Jesus did, you should you should be sacrificial in your love to, to your to your spouse and you know me as a husband, I should be sacrificial to my wife and every, everything is it, it, and it's hard to do it by myself. It's hard to make Betsy my priority, but then I make God my priority, it just reflects automatically. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying if you cannot renounce everything in this world. If you cannot put away everything in this world and be a vessel that contains God and God alone completely, you cannot be his disciple. Hallelujah. Are you a disciple of Jesus? Would you take a minute and just examine yourself and see if you are a true disciple of Jesus? Amen. Everything else can wait. Everything else takes Number two, priority. If you are not filled with God, there is a problem. So you see what I did? When I had all these things in it, okay, when I had all these things in it, There's no way I can fill this without emptying out the other stuff. So you gotta empty yourself. You gotta empty yourself. Baggage. Empty yourself. Humble yourself. And take everything that comes as number one in your life, take it out and make it hard. Unless you humble yourself and take everything out, empty yourself out. Isn't that what Jesus did? Oh, yeah, he left heaven and he emptied himself to come and be, he took a form of a bond servant. Amen. So you want to serve God? Oh, yeah, let's go to the number two of this whole thing, right? Well, you want to serve God? You better empty yourself out. I heard, I heard a pastor, you know, Pastor Jensen Franklin, he talks about this pizza box. And he's like, do you want me to come to your house with pizza in my hand? No, it should be in a box. The box is probably 30 cents or something. But the box is of so much value because the box is in where 
the, 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 the restaurant owner puts the pizza in. And now when you deliver the pizza, it's in the box. Yes. The box might be so cheap, but it is so important that the box becomes the, the very thing that God delivers. It is so important that we need to empty ourselves out. Number two, clean ourselves out. Have you ever dragged a car? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you shouldn't ask that, but have you ever drank in a coffee cup that is sitting there and filled with fungus? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Any people in the office have seen this? No. I have seen this in the office. <laughs> Some people just bring it to the, uh, uh, you know, the break room sink and leave it with like half, half cup of coffee in there. And we can go spidey, come on Monday morning, we're like, ooh. <laughs> Looks like somebody's having a little experiment going on. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to clean yourself up. Isn't that the words that we read today talks about? What does the word say? The word says like this. The word says like this. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Wait a minute. When you are filled with God, you automatically become. Now it's not about you saying, God, use me. God, please use me this way. It's almost like this. This cup, I have filled it up with water. But it's almost like, I can go, I need something. So I said, this is me. When I meet somebody else, oh, God just spilled all over me. When you are, sorry, Austin. Austin's like, did you mess up? No. <laughs> I'll put the camera away. You okay? <laughs> He's still giving me the. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? When you're so filled with God, everybody you bump into gets a little bit of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> everybody you meet everybody you come in contact with God just automatically spills out of you into their lives you're like whoa I want some, some, some more of that hey yeah I would like to hang can, can we go for a coffee or something anyone share some things you know, I've, been, I've been going through so much trouble lately I've been going through this hardship lately I've been going through this pain lately you know I just I don't know you know, even in this church, I know there are some sisters who said, you know, I came here, I talked to this person, and I just felt the peace of God. Just five minutes talking to this person, to this mother. I felt the peace of God. You know, there's so much of God in that person that this fondness of conversation brings peace to those around you. And that is the case. Again, the call of God is so strong this morning that please, let's Amen. focus on staying in the presence of God and asking Him to fill us with nothing else but Him, Himself, God, His power, His glory, His presence. Let Him fill our lives. <coughs> Let Him fill our lives. Can I wrap it up with this? 2 Kings 4, 47 BC. <coughs> Elisha, he goes into this widow's house. So let's read it. <clears throat> Verse 4 to 7. Now, the wife of one of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but a predator has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and, and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she 
went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they were, they were brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. When the oil, then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and, she, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Amen. Hallelujah. This jar of oil, in some translation, talks about the jar, it wasn't like a complete full jar of oil. It was almost like there was a little bit of oil left. A little bit of oil left at the bottom of the jar. She said, oh, I have this little bit of oil left. Everything else is stripped away from my life. Everything else was taken away. I had nothing else. But one thing I did, I just hung on to <coughs> the small portion of oil. I didn't finish that up because for some reason I felt that this portion of oil is precious, so I saved it. Some of us are so torn apart, are so ripped apart, and the enemy has stolen everything, but we held on to the little bit of God that we had, Amen. the little bit of oil that we had. Amen. And we said, I'm just going to hang tight on this. Maybe maybe I don't have so much of God. Maybe I don't have so so much of giftings. Maybe, maybe I, I, I want, but no, there's... But God is saying, just ask him to fill you. Yes. And as yes. he fills you, it's not just filling, but bumping into people. Then the purpose of God is being so revealed that you stop pouring into other people's lives. Amen. Yes. Yes, we are called to pour into the lives of others. Yes, we are called to pour into the lives of those around us. There's a reason why you are in your neighborhood. There's a reason why you are in that worst place. There's a reason why are in your school, why you have that kind of friends, why you have those kind of co-workers, there's a reason God has placed you in a place where you can overflow. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand in the God. I want to come back to 2 Timothy 2.21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Maybe you're telling me today, oh, Pastor Jacob, I'm not so full of God. Actually, I have all kinds of God inside my life. Maybe you say, God, I have all these problems and all these things and I don't know what to do. Maybe you're still struggling with some sins and you're struggling with some addiction problems. Maybe there's simple habits and there are issues in your life. Maybe there is hatred. Maybe there's unforgiveness. Maybe there is bitterness deep inside of you. And you want to get closer to God but there's all these things that's creeping up and kind of stands in front of you that you cannot even move forward. God is saying, come to him. Praise him. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? Even if your skins, even if your sins are scarlet red, you know what scarlet red means? Like this. In the Old Testament, you guys all know that there was sacrifice happening. And the priest had something like a big rock, like a like a like a towel kind of like a rug, like a, a big piece of cloth. And after and before every sacrifice, he would take this and he would wipe the altars. And there were blood, just wiping out blood from all the sacrifices. And, and for days and weeks and years, they, they keep this. You know how hard it is to take one drop of blood stain from our shirt? Or from my outfits. Sometimes you almost think it's an impossible task. 
But this rug went through weeks and months and years of touching blood and becomes not just red, but dark red. So red that there's no way you can do anything with this but throw it out. But the Bible says, even if your sins are that red, you can make it white as snow. Amen. That's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk with Jesus today. There is hope. Hallelujah. Yes, Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come to give you life and life in his face. So as we close our eyes, let's ask God to cleanse us. To remove every dishonorable thing. Any things that we held as priority. Any things that we held as an idol in front of us. God is saying, remove it. Remove it so we can be a vessel, a vessel of honor. So, 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 so he can come and fill our hearts. He can come and fill our lives. So much, so much that we start spilling over. We start overflowing with the love of God. We start overflowing and those around us are impacted by the love of God, by the power of God, by the peace of God, by the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah! Is there anybody tonight, while all this, this afternoon, while all eyes are closed, as we all talk to God in our own language, in our own ways, I would like to ask, is there anybody this afternoon who wants to say, God, I'm struggling with sin. I'm struggling with this addiction. I'm struggling with this problem. God, it's just a name. It's just one of the things that I have under my belt. But I truly, I, 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 have, I haven't given up everything to truly have you and you alone as my ultimate satisfaction. And that is you this afternoon. And now is the time to give your hearts to Jesus and say, that's me. I need you, Jesus. Would you come and keep my heart? Would you come and fill my life? And that's you, please. Just raise your hands up as a sign of surrender, as a Amen. sign of submission in God's word. And say, that's me, God. That's me. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you say this prayer after me? Jesus, let's all pray together. Jesus, we come before you. We want to make you our ultimate satisfaction. You are our Lord. You are our Lord. Lord of all. Lord of all. Everything, God. Everything, God. We, we empty ourselves out. We empty ourselves. Please wash us with your precious blood. Please wash us with your precious blood. And cleanse us from all sins. Cleanse us from all sins. And fill ourselves with you. Fill ourselves with you. We want you, Jesus. We want you. Fill our hearts with you, Jesus. Fill our hearts with you. With your joy. With your, joy. With your peace. With your peace. With your love. That the world would see you through me. So I surrender myself. I submit myself to your lordship. From today on, it's you alone. You alone, the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you put your hands together and give God glory? so good. You know why he's speaking to you this afternoon? Because Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's not because we are not trying to be a Christian or anything. We are trying to pursue him. And as we try to pursue God, he comes after us. And he keeps speaking to us. 
So the closer and closer we get to him, the more we get to know him. The more we realize this world is just full of garbage and rubbish. It all appears pretty today. It's all vanity. Amen. It all goes away. There's only one thing that is forever and ever. And that's God and his presence, his peace and his love and his joy. So as we sing this song, can we all just meditate upon his goodness? Can we all just continue to praise him and worship him and do whatever you want to do with Jesus and say, God, I love you. And say, God, fill me with your presence. Just fill me with your presence. Hallelujah. 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 I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for
We thank you, God, for loving us so much that you emptied yourself, came to this earth to serve, came to this earth to die for us. So this morning, this afternoon, we want to empty ourselves so that we can be full of you, so we can serve in this community as well. So we thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for dealing with our hearts in this afternoon. We want to walk with you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In our lives we pray. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Amen. 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 Walk with the King. Amen. Walk with Amen. Jesus. Amen. He is our ultimate satisfaction. Can I be honest with you? If you make Him your ultimate satisfaction, nothing in this world can ever steal your joy, can ever steal your peace, can ever steal the love of God away from you. Because Jesus is everything, no one can do anything. May God bless you. I want to move with your head. Amen. Amen.